Next question is from Kyle Grego. Do you have any book recommendations for the quarantine? Oh, I definitely do. Um, I don't recommend reading nonfiction necessarily unless it's, uh, you know, escape. So unless it's something you can read about historically that kind of takes you away from the current, you know, situation. Yeah. Um, I definitely don't think you should read books on viruses or, you know, how to like, you know, how to be, you know. Or like revelation. Yeah, yeah. nothing scary. You know, that. you want to, books are really good at calming uh, the, the mind and the soul if you use them uh, properly. My favorite books when I'm stressed out are books that help me work on my, my, my spiritual self, on my sense of acceptance. One of my favorite books for this was uh, by Eckhart Tolle, um, A New Earth. Now, Eckhart Tolle is, you, many people consider him a spiritual leader, uh, but it's not religious. He doesn't talk about anything metaphysical in, in his books. He talks a lot about the ego and why the, why, the, why the human consciousness creates the ego and how you know it, it causes a lot of pain and suffering in us. And he talks a lot about how to accept reality and how to be more present. And I read this book. Uh, or I read most of this book with Jessica uh, maybe a couple of years ago, so something she introduced me to, and it had a profound effect on me. You know, it was like two or three years ago. It was maybe a couple of years out of you know getting divorced and working through the whole dual custody thing with my kids. Very very stressful, difficult time, and that book really really helped me. And that's something that I could see that I could pick up right now that would really help me in the current situation because the current situation is characterized by uncertainty. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's going on. Um, we can put ourselves in a lot of pain just by thinking and imagining potential. What if? What if I lose my job? What if I lose my house? What if my, my, I get sick? What if my parents get sick? What if this thing explodes? Oh my gosh. And that's us living outside of the present. Um, and that tends to cause a lot of pain. And the book, A New Earth, is all about how to get out of that, how to exercise and practice getting out of that um, and give yourself a, a better sense of calm. Yeah, I've been um, going through a book actually with Courtney as well uh, as Fingerprints of the Gods. You know Graham Hancock. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it it's great because it's uh, it gives you a lot of like um, ancient history and and things that um, you know are are somewhat on the fringe in terms of like being accepted uh, as fact or or you know the theory and and it's just it, it's just kind of a fun way to kind of look back at history and see how they're trying to kind of put all the dots together and it's it's super fascinating uh, to see how you know certain rituals were practiced certain things like I didn't know about certain civilizations and he has like a follow up book too about like America before so the Americas have a lot more history that's just being uncovered now uh, that 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 you know they're they're finding all these different uh, um, like his, like sites that they're uncovering, uh, you know. So it, it's just really fascinating to me. It's just to get into uh, stuff like that. Like it, it, it sparks my curiosity. You don't got any Adam? Yeah, nothing. <laughs> uh, little blue truck. What's that? Uh, that's what I oh, was you've reading. been reading your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was reading. Normally, I have like lots of uh, book recommendations, and normally, when somebody messages me, the uh, the response I normally have is like, "What do you like to read first before I recommend?" Uh, a good read because it really matters that matters to me like if you're not like for example I, I just recently finished a book that is probably made uh, for sure my top 20 uh, maybe even my top 10 which was uh, you know how how an income uh, how an economy grows and why it dies oh you talked about that too. I, I think that was that was like who wrote that uh, Peter Schiff is it Peter Schiff yeah Peter okay. Schiff oh, I yeah. believe uh, wrote that um, and then I'm, I'm wrapping up right now, uh, Don Yeager's, uh, great teams. Uh, so I think it's the, the 16 things or 16 te things that uh, all great teams do. Uh, that one's cool. So the great, the great teams is a great one for leadership. So if you're in a, a leadership position and, and developing a team, a staff, or you enjoy some, and you love sports analogies, that one was, is a very entertaining read that I'm reading right now. Um, and then the economy one by Peter Schiff. I mean, to me, that is, I will reread that book to my son when he gets to the age where he can understand, uh, economics, where we can have a discussion on that. And believe it or not, I could probably read that too, even though like you would think, oh, what kid wants to listen to economics? They tell it in a, uh, like a kid's story, which is, it made it phenomenal. Like Katrina doesn't even like, uh, reading or learning about any of that stuff. She kind of leaves that in, uh, for me. And I got her to to listen to that book after I read it, 
and she loved it uh, because it, it's just very entertaining the way they tell a story. And I think it pertains to where we're at right now because a lot of times when we're, we're all freaked out uh, right now and everybody's uh, scared to lose their job or have lost their job already and uh, you know, we're, a lot of people are excited that we have this trillion dollar bailout, it gives you a different perspective when you really understand how this economy was built originally. We forget about that sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think we, we especially us, we were, we're so we came so much later than we're standing on the shoulders of giants, right? Yeah. And and sometimes the the policies and the things that we roll out or the things that we think are great. Um, we have no idea the rippling effect that it potentially could have on our economy. And when you have a really good understanding of how this economy was built from zero, like when nothing was being sold or traded or bought, and and when you understand the history of it really well, it gives you a greater perspective of uh, like what we're currently going through and how we should be handling times like this. And it's done in a, in a, in a children's story. So I, I, I can't recommend that book enough. I think it's an important read right now for most people. It's a book I'll reread to my, my son for sure. Mm, there, there's a book I recommend uh, for you, for your kid. It's called uh, Nobody Knows How to Make a Pizza. You told me that. I wrote that down. Yeah, that one's a really good one. It's by uh, Julie Borowski, and it's it explains how no single person knows how to make a pizza when you consider – all the things that go into it from who grows the tomatoes to who makes the, the equipment that, you know, that gets the tomatoes to who makes the fertilizers to who, who grows the wheat. And, and you start to realize that there's millions of people that are involved in producing things that we take for granted. Yeah, I have it's a so feeling wonderful. it's going to be very similar mm -hmm. to this one because that's the, they, their whole – instead of a pizza, they use, uh, you know, an island where the, uh, the commodity is fish. You know, this is before money existed. Mm -hmm. This is before anything uh, – and the only way that you could live was you could catch a fish a day. And every at that point in time, uh, everybody had the capability to probably catch one fish a day. It took that you didn't you didn't have a pole, you didn't have a net, you didn't have anything. It took all day long you would get to catch one fish, and you, that basically what it took for you to survive until innovation happened. Somebody then made a net, and then it talks about how that how the the entire economy grew from that, and they use. Uh, real characters today, like uh, you'll, but they give them fake names, so you'll know when they're like talking about a politician mm -hmm. or a policy. So they, they 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 include that into the story. So it's very well done, and the way they give the the analogies off of fishing and how that was a commodity, and then it, and then how the economy grew from that, and they and then of course there's challenges where you know at one point uh, that you know the the net's been made, and then other people on the on the island feel that they ha should have the right to use his net and so Interesting. yeah they help you and then at the end of every chapter they they actually summarize and work through the challenge and why it's important to, to decide to go this way or that way and what the long lasting effect uh, yeah you told me this a while ago i still haven't looked at you it definitely it's know how to eat a yeah. pizza yeah so. hey, you know how to eat one yeah i um it's interesting i was watching a a, a video by um i forgot it might have been bishop Barron. And he was talking about obviously his his standpoint is from the the Christian religion, but he I consider him a very strong spiritual leader, and so I think there's a lot of wisdom in listening to someone like him uh, and and other spiritual leaders from maybe other practices. But he said something interesting. He said uh, uh, God like God likes it when people feel weak, and it makes a lot of sense. I think that's when people seek out you know spiritual guidance. That's when growth happens, right? When you feel confident and like, nothing's bothering you and everything's great. That's when you tend to not try to meditate or tend to not pray or tend to not seek out spiritual growth. So other books that may be excellent to pick up during this period of time are books on spirituality. Um, there's, the, of course, the great spiritual texts from the major religions, you know, the the Bible and, you know, Buddhist teachings. Which that's a heavy read and, for the first time. Sure, <laughs> but, but I yeah. think if, you know, or maybe books about spiritual, you know, these spiritual books. You're right, it is heavy reading. Or a book maybe, about how to read it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think th this might be a good opportunity, you know, if you're finding yourself like, oh, I need to get rid of this anxiety and stress and I need to read something. Spiritual growth is, uh, I mean, you, you grow faster and stronger when you feel scared, spiritually speaking, than when you feel great and confident and everything's going on is going great so those might be some good options or, or books in that in that category i i, th I recommended to jessica did you read i know she did right uh, purpose driven life uh no i didn't read it but she told me about it so. and she said she's it, my cliff notes yeah <laughs> <laughs> she liked it right she did she loved it yeah that's a phenomenal yeah read she liked that, it a lot, along so. those lines